All right, everybody, we are back and we are ready to roll. We are here with Golden Dice Podcast, episode 17, I'm pretty sure it is. And with me, I have Dr. Afra himself or herself, Shane Philippi. Oh, yes, I am here. <laughs> I am here. And I actually, as you were gone, caught up on that comic. <laughs> Hey, it's good, dude. It is. It? It's solid. I like the Vader comic uh, a little better. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, what's his face? Triple Zero gets to shine a little more, and he's he's pretty hysterical. But yeah, they're they're both good. So we won't stay on it too long. But the North American Championship prizes were announced. I'm assuming you're pretty excited about they look that. Cool. Uh, the mat looks crazy. The alt art looks cool. I guess. I mean, is that technically a spot gloss as well? Right. Um, for the athlete. I don't remember. I don't know yeah, what they sure. said. But either way, the card looks cool. The mat looks cooler, I think. So yeah, I'm about it. So people are understanding what we're talking about. They just announced the European and North American Championship prizes, which is um, at Gen Con, right? That's that's Gen Con. Yeah, that's Gen Con. So when Tommy was at Nova, is the uh, American. This is the national one, right? This is the North American one. Yep. Um, but yeah, so they announced some prizes. They, you know, they have everything in there. It's participation is a Dr. Affert alt art if you go to day two. So it seems they're expanding on that because normally day two is just top cut. Yeah. But it seems like there's some Swiss on day two. So day two, you get some uh, acrylic resource tokens that look almost like clearish with like a black front. Uh, it's a double sided Ray and Kylo for top 64. And those are both the new ones. And I dig that. The 32 is the the binders. I don't really like them, yeah. personally. <laughs> but the top eight is the mat. Top four, you get an invite to worlds and plaques and tickets and stuff like that. But the mat just has a little bit too much going on in the background for me. But I, like, I, I like the you. simple how they kept Phasma and how they kept Luke and stuff like that. Maul's got a background, but at least it's all like dark. It's just kind of like one color. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit more going. I mean, I'm more used to like the crazier mats from like our like DBZ gate days and stuff. They have a little bit more going on. But, I mean, I like I like both aspects. I like how they've kept them pretty clean as of late. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this one's cool. Um, the binders, like you said, kind of weird. But you know, it, it does change it up. Like I I've been fine with their prize support. I feel like the Galactic qualifiers have been really cool. Uh, and that's something new that FFG hasn't done before, like Galactic Qualifiers in general. So it's pretty cool that they're doing things like that. I know people have been complaining a little bit about prize support in general for things. Um, and I know you'll, you'll talk about prize support at Worlds too. But I've been I've been a fan of most of what they've done. But yeah, I mean, in general, uh, I feel like the North Americans stuff is pretty cool. Do they give out uh, World seats to the top four last year as well? Or was it just the top one or two? No idea. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I don't know, but that's interesting. That seems like a lot. I know you got a world seat if you went 6-0 at a GQ, right? Um, but Yeah, that's how Edwin got a seat, the, yeah. the eventual champion. He he was the R2-P2 founder Yeah, at a Unplugged. I mean, I don't know if he's founder, but he's the first one to win something with it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that top four seems cool, though. That's good. Agreed. I mean, that, that just puts uh, seats into the hands of people who deserve it. Yep. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, Cool. So that's all we had to talk about, right? Nothing happened this past week. Yeah, guys, have a great day. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I actually just got back from Worlds 2017, and man, it was a it was an absolute blast. Uh, me and my buddy Joe, we flew out there Tuesday, and I got home like two hours ago, <laughs> as as of recording this. Yeah. And like you literally just, just got back. <laughs> yes, literally just got back, and. This upcoming weekend, I'm going to San Diego, so we can't record on our normal day. So it's just, it's wild, man. It is wild. But it was a blast, man. So we got there, and I'll, I guess I'll mention pods before we start to break down. And I played day 1B, or one, yeah, 1B, which was Friday. But we got there, man, and we just grinded pods. We didn't, and I had a little bit of an issue because FFG didn't announce what the prizes were for like prize tickets. So it's like me and Joe are spending like ten dollars a pod to grind these things out, and we're like, "What if this is like the worst prize wall in the entire world?" <laughs> right, like this ever. was on Tuesday, like, right? This was Wednesday. They didn't have anything on Tuesday. Well, the hyperspace report was Tuesday, but Tuesday, they didn't have so pods or Wednesday, anything for Wednesday. But the prize yeah. wall didn't go up until Wednesday night, right? So you're playing like in the afternoon on Wednesday. Something, yeah. They had a preview, yeah, Wednesday night, and then the prize wall was finally open on Thursday. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and it was cool. Like they had some cool stuff. Like I was able to get the golden resource tokens from last year's, which was, I believe, day two for worlds last year. Yep. So I grabbed two sets of those. I grabbed the battle droids. I was able to get Hondo. And towards the end, I was able to grab on Sunday, I was able to grab a cannon 
an extra Palpatine and I had some extra tickets. So I got the full art of Luke, nice. which I dig. So I know Luke's not competitive, but he's one of my favorite characters. So it was more of like a collector's <laughs> a collector's yeah. buy rather than anything else. But the prize wall was solid. There was some cool stuff I could see for X-Wing and Armada. No idea what any of if they're competitive ships or if they're, you know, bad. Somebody who actually plays those games could tell you, but they certainly looked cool. So, yeah. Yeah, they had some cool stuff. They had the uh, the Vader like flying down on the tie too from uh, I think that was yeah. uh, North Gen, Gen Con last year. So I think it was Gen Con last year. Yeah, you know, I was upset. One thing that they stopped making uh, deck boxes. I was I had extra yeah. tickets, and that's really what I wanted. Like I don't have a deck box like that of any you know any sorts, no off brands or whatever. So yeah. I was going to grab that, and I was looking. And it was like uh, Worlds twenty sixteen, Worlds twenty sixteen, Worlds twenty fifteen, and then it was like North America twenty seventeen. I was like, why do I like? At this point, I'd rather just go out and buy one that might be a little bit better than buy or use my tickets on an old Worlds one. Like that just feels yeah. weird to me. Yeah, it does feel but, weird. It feels like just back stock, so they they just put it out there. But yeah, yeah. I mean, but again, I think the prize wall was great. I don't want to harp on it, but mm-hmm. I, I really enjoyed it. That was the only weird thing uh, for me. So, yeah, pods were great. It was actually kind of funny because me and Joe thought people were going to joke and make weird <laughs> decks. And we show up Wednesday and um, oh, I have to figure out their name, but they were from Brazil. They have uh, a a podcast that they do in, in Brazil and they're real big into it. And they came and they were just like busting out these like crazy decks. But they were talking to me. They were like, well, like we don't have galactic qualifiers. Like if we are going to get anything, it has to be here. So we oh, want to wow. make sure we run and get some practice against Americans too, because our meta is different. Like we want to yeah. get some games in. So I don't blame them at all. Like I, you know, it makes sense why they would. But like Joe showed up with battle droids. Yeah. Uh, I had like Elite Po One and Elite Ezra in my back pocket, and I was just like, oh, no, thank you. I'm not going to yeah. run that anymore. <laughs> so I, I rocked FN Talzin pretty much the whole time and just had a blast. And it it's was like semi competitive, so I could go three zero, but I could also go zero three if I just get nuked. So <laughs> yeah. Do you have uh, any um, any yeah. est- and, uh, any estimate how many you did like under or over twenty pods for the week? Uh definitely under twenty. I probably did five on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, I maybe did three or four because I went and checked on Joe and what he was how he was doing and the sh- uh, he he was on stream. So we'll get yeah. to that later. But I uh, checked on him Friday. Joe can or uh, Friday I played. So I was too burnt out to do any. I just like walked to Taco Bell and just got like food, which is probably just as bad as doing a pod after being burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just walked over, got that, and then really just called it a day. And then Saturday we were doing some more pods, but I did like three. And I was like, Joe, I'm done. I can't. He like, Jack, yeah. I could tell during that last round that you did not want to be doing this anymore. <laughs> I was like, dude, I have to, you know, I have to play on day two. Like I can't, like I just, I'm done. Yeah. Like I'm playing this like casual type that like I, I just and it wasn't even optimized now playing with the deck like obviously when you play with it more i just threw fn thousand together i was like why not it seems fun half half competitive and like throughout the entire day i was just like wow i realized how much better this deck could be so like half the time when i would have these plays i would be like but this one is so much better if i only had that card in my deck <laughs> so just stuff like that but it, it was fun I, I was you know three four days of it is just a lot yeah it's it is. um but cool. So that's uh, pods were great. Again, it was they they were spotty at first. At first, you couldn't even pay cash, which is weird. And I mean, honestly, it doesn't bother me too much. It's more of an inconvenience because I took out money for that. You know, it's just rather pay cash than my you know hold up the line with a card or anything. Right. But there's like a tax on foreign. So like these the Brazilians, like I was spotting them, and they would give me ten dollars cash or whatever. Oh wow! Because um, they would get taxed if they use their card. So FFG, sure. you know, props to them in that moment because they did change it uh to help out those people but th- that was weird to me that you could only pay with a card yeah at first but, it's kind of weird but yeah so let's move on to the spicy stuff the spicy. so i i played on friday uh one one b so they broke the swiss down into day one b uh or one a one b and one c on thursday friday and saturday and then the top cut was uh sunday and dude like i'm bad with names i'm bad with faces but when I went to play, I recognized way too many people to feel comfortable. I was like, I don't know anybody, and I know a lot of people in this room. Like, this is bad. Like, this is a, <laughs> this is a pretty good room. Um, and like, you know, there were a lot of people playing. Like, uh, Nick and Joe from the Hyperloops were playing that day. Like, Taxer was playing. 
Um, it was just so many, so many good people that I saw on the field. Uh, that's Edwin played that day. And as we go through, I'll talk about how he smack gave me the smackdown. <laughs> um, so yeah, I took Sabine Ezra, uh, as I've mentioned in podcasts, anybody could have guessed what I was playing. If you had listened to us, you know, I talked about other decks, but as you could hear in my voice, I was pro- probably going to run Sabine. Yeah. Um, so I ran her, if you're interested in that deck list, it's on uh, the database. You could just go Sabine Ezra top 16. I guess you could look that up. Uh, it's actually the same one that Mike ran uh, from uh, Hyperloops. He ran it on Thursday in 6 0 and actually didn't up, end up losing until his uh, top four match, which is crazy. Yeah. And shows, and the fact that he almost won that first round, which it, if you can go on to FFG's Twitch and rewatch that game, I think it's up there for like a month or something like that. That's It was, it was crazy play. But uh, it was funny. Him and I were on like the same list, basically, aside. From one card, he had a second hasty exit, and I had a friends in low places. And I asked him, I was like, was it really? Like, were there any cards you regretted? Like, anything like that? And he's like, dude, second hasty. I was like, really? Like, I don't know. It's just, at times, it's like sometimes a dead card. It's You know, if you play against Obi Maz, there's a chance they could outclaim you, especially if they get, like, double four speeds turn one. Right. And he was just like, honestly, it was amazing. And hasty doesn't really work against Poyota. But talking to him, he convinced me of it. And I rolled with, I dropped my friends low, added a second one, a uh, second hasty, and it, it paid off big time this day. And I also put a, one thing I, I thought was funny that he was on too, because I thought it was a little crazy for trying it out, was uh, Entangle. I like tried it out a week and a half on TTS, like before uh, Worlds, and it was, it was doing some solid work. Just because some games I'm sitting on money towards the end of the game, I was like, honestly, if I had an Entangle right here, this would be dirty. Yeah. So I got some practice with it. I wasn't sure if I was crazy for thinking that, but when I saw, uh, you know, when he shared his list with me, I was like, oh, okay, so I'm not crazy thinking that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so that list is up online. We'll start to dive in, I guess, to the to the one B. I think there were around like a hundred people that played each day, something like that. Yeah. Maybe a little lower, like ninety five ish, ninety somewhere around yeah, there. It was like eighty eight, I believe, your day, and then somewhere in there each time. So like just under three hundred total people. Yeah. So it was, it was a good turnout. I had a lot of fun with it. And seeing that many people play was was awesome. But my first match was at, actually on the Chance Cube stream. So also shout out to Chance Cube for streaming games. Like yeah. uh, day 1A is the only time that FFG actually streamed during the Swiss rounds. The rest of it was uh, day two stuff. So day two Swiss, they did stream. And then some of the top matches, they, they streamed. Right. But Ch- Chance Cube picked up that slack and uh, gave people... No, oh, I don't know. I don't want to call it Slack because, you know, they had other <laughs> other games yeah. to stream. Uh, but, you know, they picked that up and were able to stream Friday and Saturday for people that weren't able to attend so they could still get their fill of uh, some competitive competitive games. Uh, but, yeah, so I, I sat down or pairings went up and I knew Chance Cube was the first table and I see number one next to my name. I was like, heck, yeah, here we go. And I was like, oh, wait, I'm going to be on stream. This is nerve wracking. And I'm like, part of me is trying to sit down and like mentally set up. I'm like, oh, he's playing Obi Maz. Let me think through this. And then the other half is like trying to post about it and send it to you guys. So, you know, yeah. that I'm going to be on stream. Yeah, uh, you were like me stream chance cube. <laughs> it's like complete sentence structure breakdown. <laughs> just get the information out. <laughs> I was just trying to get it out there as quickly as I could. Yeah, it worked. We we tuned in. I think like I think like four or five of us were watching that game. And honestly, it was great because it, it, it featured everything people hate about Sabine. It featured hyperspace jumps. Yep. It featured a, a turn two to ever tell me the odds to kill Maz. Yeah. Uh, it featured two second chances on Sabine at one time. There was just uh, a lot of fun stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we couldn't see your hand on Chance Cube most of the time. You can't really see the player's hand on the. I know the FFG yeah. stream; they were kind of like all these different camera angles. But for this, yeah, the second turn, I'm like watching. I'm like, I'm like, why are you? Why is he not playing another weapon from his discard pile? Like, what is he doing? Like, he over you overrid it instead of, and you save three money, and then you just never tell me the odds. Turn two to kill Maz. I was like, oh my god, that's so that's so cheap. I hate this deck. That's yeah, when I, I just stopped rooting for you. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> Well, somebody, I think it was, I was checking. So uh, I didn't really get a chance to go through and watch Twitch uh, till like that night just to see if I had any mistakes, which I, I know I did. I think it was first turn or second turn. I should have played a Lothcat instead of playing Running Interference because then he got rid of uh, the Lothcat with Maz's goggles and then he had to focus on Maz. Like he pitched a reroll all this, so it wasn't like he could instantly resolve it all. Right. Uh, and then he got rid of the Lothcat and then he could focus into an OB3 and smack me for three when I could have stopped that if I played it in the right order, but I got greedy and wanted to get it down. So, cause I knew if I just played Lothcat, 
removed his uh, OB, he probably would have claimed. But I was, I don't, it was really dumb of me. But yeah. luckily, I still was able to win. Like, there were some crazy plays he had where it was like he just rolled out with an ancient and got three, three, three. And yeah. I was like, oh, I saw I'll that. Easy yeah. pickings, those threes, <laughs> those yeah, OB the, threes. The next turn he rolled out and got two one shields and you easy pickings that. It was like two in a row. That was huge two yeah. turns. Yeah, I remember yeah. watching that one. Yeah, it was, and it, it was, it was a good match and that matchup scares me and it's so weird too because both of you want to like ha- you both of you are trying to do the exact same setup so you don't want like you don't want to play Maz's vault like I did not want to play I didn't want to give him the opportunity like even yeah. if I benefit so much from it like he does too like next thing I would know he would roll out like even if he hits like a blank on an obi die three for one on an obi die and then like a, a shield on the ancient then he just um can alter or concentrate and then there's nine yeah. So I knew I I knew I couldn't deal with that. So I never played Maz's Vault. But that's a game that if you guys are interested, of course you can go on Chance Cube and check out their archived games and stuff like that. It was it was crazy, and it, he was a good player. He ended up finishing five and one with his only loss to me. So you nice. know that shows the the skill level of that game, and just happened to be on stream, which was cool. Yep. And then yeah, so that was my first game. Start off one and zero, feeling pretty good. I was hoping to hop back on stream, but I know it doesn't really like work that way with SOS. Like it kind of balances out a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so match two, I face Kylo Anakin, and this is Edwin, the eventual world champion. And I wasn't super nervous sitting down. Obviously, I don't prefer the matchup, but I've beaten Kylo uh, Talzin plenty of times. And now I knew this this deck opened up CQA a little bit more. It opened up Maul Saber a little bit more. I figured he was running, you know, without Talzin, he probably had Ancients. He probably had Cross Guards. Which he had all those things. It showed us, and yeah. it was, just, dude, it was, it was tough. Yeah, we we swung at each other pretty hard. He killed uh, Sabine with the same play that he got Mike with, with a cross guard lightsaber out of hand for one damage to kill Sabine. Yep. And he CQA'd, and just before that, he C- he rolled out CQA'd my whole hand. I couldn't play the second chance. Didn't have a dollar to play it, you know, for an override, and. Yeah, at that point with Sabine already having six or seven damage on her, and you dump my C- uh, my dump uh, dump my second chance, I knew I was toast. So at that point, like we traded characters, he killed, uh, I killed Kylo, he killed Sabine, and then Anakin versus Ezra. I think you can kind of guess who's going to win that, especially <laughs> when it's an Anakin with a Shoto, a Mauls, and an heirloom. Um, I just think Ezra got murdered there. Yeah, definitely the younglings don't win. I'll tell you that much. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. So I got rocked that match pretty bad. But and it was weird, too, because I knew Edwin a little bit, but I wasn't sure. Like, obviously, I start to think of my strength of schedule. Like, I want him to start winning. I had no idea how well he was going to do. Like, Kylo Anakin was an interesting call. Like, what if he ran into a vehicle deck? Like, I had no idea yeah. um, how he would end up finishing. Uh, but obviously, he finished 6-0 and <laughs> ended up yep. winning. Uh, ended up winning the whole thing. So, I mean, I was... Uh, that was crazy, and congrats to him. It, it was great being able to play against him, even though I lost, just to see his uh, his skill level and the plays that he was making. It was it was uh, phenomenal, really. Yeah, for sure. And he he definitely won with like class too. Like he was very like, yeah, like, I just came to have fun. Like I was not expecting this, and Dude. you know, he was super casual. Like I I loved his like his whole persona after that. He was very humble, just like yeah, it was this was a fun game. <laughs> like I had blessed. So um. I don't know. I don't think we'll actually get into and talk about like the top eight, top four and final match too much on this. Like we'll mainly from my perspective, I guess, because I don't know how much time we'll have. Yeah. But I just want to add in case we don't get to it, dude, when the finals match ended, it was like the funniest thing. Me and Joe were talking about it. So um, and I, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong. I know uh, mods, mads, mads, yeah, uh, you're saying, mads? I, that's what they're saying online. So. <laughs> All right, so FFG stream got you know if I'm wrong then I blame them. Yep. Uh, but he had like his whole your destiny crew and a lot of the uh, international European European contingent behind him because you know why not? Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Um, they were all cheering him on, and Edwin was just sitting there like he rolled up, he walked out or into the area with his suitcase, he put it off to the side, and then he just sat down. He took his deck out, and like it was just him by himself. <laughs> and I was like, Edwin, like where are your friends and stuff? Like. I'm pretty sure his like girlfriend or fiance or something was out there earlier that day or somebody he knew yeah. some girl. I don't know. I don't want to judge and jump to conclusions. <laughs> but, uh, she was there, you know, by his side and stuff like that. And she wasn't there. I was like, where's everybody? He's like, Oh, everybody took flights. 
<laughs> at the end of the finals match he's like yeah i think i missed my flight or like i'm about to miss my flight oh my so gosh. he obviously didn't expect that all of his friends had left and like right when he won he just like looked exhausted he like packed yeah. his dice up like he had no face there was no smile on his face after he won <laughs> and me and joe were just like laughing like he looked he just won worlds and he looks miserable and obviously yeah. once the interview and people started talking to him <laughs> he perked up but you could just tell like he was mentally exhausted and of course it's a grueling day like yeah we had to be there at 9 30 we had to report at 9 30 that morning and it ended around seven i think it was yeah yeah it was about that it, it was just it was funny here, so. yeah it was just funny to see the european contingent like you know have him have a whole crowd and yeah. edwin just like kind of sitting there chilling by himself yeah everything about that guy was cool except the uh the san jose sharks jersey because they they always choke but other than that <laughs> that was pretty good yeah so i wanted to add that story because it was really funny sitting there watching that <laughs> that's great he had you um, guys that's good. He had some Jersey folk behind him, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. We he's so yeah. He is from North Jersey, which is cool. Um, that it came back. The, the trophy's in the best state it could be. Yes, the armpit. Fact. The armpit. There we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So I played him in match two. It wasn't really close. And yeah. So I'm one one at this point. And then I play a Vader Royal Guard uh love it and this guy was just he even said he was like i was just having fun he's like i'm not super competitive i just want i love vader i want to run him and i'm here running him i was like credit to you and then he activated vader i was like all right discard a weapon thanks for saving me in action (laughs) it was definitely a bad i know i think it had may i think vader says may so he didn't have to do that but i guess didn't think about it till it was already done yeah um but yeah at at this point it was tough because yeah he had guardian but you know if sabine rolls out six seven damage that's you know, you, you're not going to get a chance to guardian it. Yeah. And even if I never tell him the odds for 12, you know, he already probably has some damage on him. And even if you guardian three of it away, it's still going to take a big chunk or kill Vader. So it yeah. was, yeah, it was a relatively a more simple thing, but uh, I know he finished three and three. So that's kind of awesome to have a Vader Royal Guard deck go three and three and get him that Kanan. Yeah, it's pretty sick. <laughs> hopefully he got the, uh, the Vader old art too. That, that's a really cool card. So hopefully, yeah, if he got that. enough tickets for that, that would be a solid one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, Sabine has just, you know, true and tested in, in the meta and it, it does well, has really good, of course it has bad matchups, has good matchups, but, uh, as you know, Vader's kind of fallen off to the wayside. So as soon as he was dead, the match match was over for sure. Um, but yeah, so nothing too crazy about that game. Next I play a stairs as a Ray Ayla. And this was like a weird one. Neither of us could roll damage. So it's just like, all right, first round, we did like two damage to each other. It's like, all right, I'll take a resource here, take a shield here, do this, do that. Uh, two damage, finally. There we go. Uh, and then eventually it just came down, never tell me odds, blew his character out, uh, blew Ray off. I always try to go for Ray first in that matchup. And I don't remember his name. Like I said, I'm bad with names and stuff like that. But uh, it, I think Ray A is, is struggles against Sabine because normally one of their character dies before they can get set up. And their biggest thing is getting set up quickly. So right um yeah it's tough yeah i mean I, you know of course i'm happy to see it and then i see it next round so you know i go beat that rayla so i'm three and one and then i pair against another rayla and this game i just felt bad about like so like if i never tell me the odds running interference like people can see that coming kind of but like for an opponent to just look at you, roll your dice, and you just natural roll eleven damage, <laughs> I understand the frustration. Like I was going this match, I was going for Ray first, as I've said, and I had five damage on her already. He put a force illusion down, and now he still had a shield on Ayla because we went with my battlefield, and so he played uh, handcrafted and an heirloom on Ayla, and then I natural rolled eleven damage and just one shot Ayla. So then he had Ray oh. with an heirloom and six damage on him already and <laughs> because i didn't want to get cq8 or discarded by ray my next action was to overwrite play second chance and then he just conceded oh it was God. like no we're done we're done and i was like i don't blame you but i'm not taking any chances so yeah i mean I felt like, jeez it's world it's like i'm not gonna yeah like, i'm not gonna worry about somebody's play experience no, you can't. Exactly. That. Like you brought the deck that you thought you were gonna do best with, and like that deck does that sometimes. But there's not. I mean, you can't do anything about that. Like that's just yeah, good for you for rolling that high, honestly. So yeah, it was. I think that was the only game where I really just kind of crazy rolled like that. Like you usually have won a tournament. Oh yeah. It's it feels like, uh, and that just happened to be that game. But it was actually kind of funny. I was. 
talking to, like to Joe about the deck too and stuff, and we were both like, you know, if there's four cards in your deck that need to be set aside, like there's probably an issue with the deck that needs. Yeah, to- <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that when I was watching the game. I was like, man, how many ratted cards can Jack fit into this deck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, hyper- I mean, hyperspace jump came from a different situation, of yeah, course. Yeah. But uh, still a good thing. Like even if even if you could hyperspace jump with like Verbell or something like that, that would be it, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. Um, but you're gonna take out Ezra to put in the uh, outer rim smuggler soon. <laughs> Is that what you're gonna do? Oh yeah. Yep. And then two point plot, right? He's yeah. eight points. I'll, I'll fortify, get a shield, oh make Sabine God. twelve health. There you go, dude. Perfect. So you should told me this last week. Yeah, could have. Could have got a top <laughs> eight instead. <laughs> maybe yeah and then sold those tokens for like five hundred dollars yeah dude i the power action man, was crazy dude nuts don't don't sell anything keep everything but oh my gosh no those would have been what i if i say i got all the way to top and i won it i definitely would have sold the power action tokens especially after seeing them yeah yeah you were saying <laughs> you were kind of disappointed in those so i, I get that the maps and are just the, so cool yeah, yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to be so so anybody listening that doesn't know I did end up placing 16th. Uh, or well, I placed 12th, so I made yeah. it to top 16. But um yeah, so I got the mall mat and stuff like that. Um and I I would never sell or trade any of that. Like it's just for me like part of it's winning stuff and just kind of keeping it uh is really cool for me. But those tokens were bad. And then maybe even the patience like full art, not full art because that makes it seem like it's a card. Like it's actually like a, like a painting you would put on your wall yeah. or like an artwork you would put on your wall almost debated that like it's kind of that but to me that's kind of cool to collect and have but the, ta- the power action tokens the second they came in my hand i would have sold them like yeah. those they were like they look cool on top but they were also huge like they were a poker sized chip and they were like blank they were like white on the back yeah like so everything that you saw in those pictures is what they were so they gave you like a neutral one for each color like they had that little like star type thing and there was a red, yellow, blue and gray one. And then they had like one hero and one villain for like them. They're like there was Tarkin and uh, the new General Leia that hasn't been spoiled yet. There was the the runaway Bumas for yellow hero yes. and then a character that hasn't been spoiled for yellow villain. And then blue was Maul Saber for villain and the new Luke for hero so like it's cool in theory i just i'm not i was not big on them at all yeah and not big on the them price at all. but i mean if you can pay your uh your flight and airbnb back then probably worth it yeah really that five hundred dollars all right i broke even yeah <laughs> yeah uh but yeah so th- th- not not too hot on them but i don't even what did, how do we get there no idea how not we sure. got to that but uh, we're all about six now <laughs> <laughs> uh so match six obi maz again <laughs> You know, it's really weird. Like I was even listening to like some of the like Hyperloops did like a day one A debrief and day one B debrief. And I've talked to other players who are like, yeah, I've played a different deck every every round. I'm like, I played Obi Maz twice. I played Ray Ayla twice. Yeah. Come on. Um, Come on, people. Although Ray Ayla, if I could play it all six times, I might take that. <laughs> uh, I kind of like that matchup, like I said. Uh, <laughs> but Obi Maz is a lot more stressful. And man, this one was crazy. This was a super back and forth game. Uh, again, killed Maz early, but he had a double ancients and a Shoto on Obi Wan, hmm. and that is a lot to chew through because he's getting two shields every time, and then he can also heal for four if he gets into a tight jam. Yeah, that's a tough so he's it's it's almost impossible to get him. Like it's almost impossible to do damage to him to set up even a never tell me the odds kill you play. Like that's that's just hard to set up. So. Eventually, I vandalized the Shoto. And so then he just had the two Ancients, and then I was able to do enough damage to force him to do both those uh, and heal for four. So, you know, he's back down to four health, and I saw both my characters. I think his big mistake throughout the game was just not killing Ezra. Eventually, I impersonated six damage, as I always do. I never do the full seven, really, because I want to make you kill him, use a die to kill him. Yeah, for sure. And... um yeah, so Ezra was around, and it came into late game. Like there was a round where I garbage shooted, removed both of Obi's dice, and kept alive. And there was just like a tense play at the end where he rolled out, he vibrant knifed and rolled out, used his running interference, and said I could not activate because at this point he had three health left, and mm-hmm. you know, at 
you kind of know that if I roll out, I'm bound to do three damage because Sabine was loaded up at this point. Yeah. I didn't have a second chance. I burned through both of them. So he did that, and he hit a four-speed special. He didn't hit lethal on his on his dice, but he hit a four-speed special. And I knew he had to concentrate. Like He had two cards left in his deck or whatever, five in his hand. Right. And I was like, there's no way he... Or four in his hand because he played a Vibra Knife rolled in. I was like, he has to concentrate. I know he does. But I was like, but does he? And I was like, but every time I assume somebody doesn't have it, it bites me in the butt. Yeah. Like one time Joe, like in testing with Target 7th, he like Scorch Earth next time. I was like, there's no way you have Scorch Earth again. Like that was the first round. Come on. Do you get to draw twice back to back rounds? Scorch Earth. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, so, of course, I took the safe play and I hyperspace jumped and got out of there. Yeah. And then I rolled out and killed obi-wan so that was that you have to do that for for cards like concentrate and um scorched earth i guess can fit in that category but like more like concentrate bait and switch stuff like that like you have to just assume they have it at all times yeah unless you know obviously unless two are gone but if 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 he could have it assume he does and then you'll play around that way yep yeah so i definitely had to but i mean that was oh my like that was one of those games because to make to make top top sixteen, I knew I had to be five and one. Yeah, I knew I could not go into day two being four and two. There was no way my strength of schedule, even if I went out, there's no way being seven and two, and coming from four and two day one that I make top top sixteen. So I just I had to win that game. And oh man, dude, I was so stressed. I was shaking. I just like, <laughs> oh, that was crazy. It was a great game too. Like that's that was the great thing about that's it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, five and one is a huge accomplishment first day uh, by for anyone. Like that's fantastic. But yeah, have, knowing that you have to go in and play three more games, being four and two is scary. I mean, you have to win out to be in contention, and then it comes down to strength of schedule. So like, being five and one is where you you really need to be. Honestly, like four and two, yeah. you have a long shot. But like, if you want a realistic chance at it, you got to be five and one at least going into that day. Yeah, and and it's tough too because I mean we try to peg ourselves as like a competitive podcast too. Yeah, and well, the other people I don't peg us as that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, excluding you, Shane. Excluding <laughs> Please me do and, not put that tag on my name, people. All right, get that out of here. Me and Tommy try to try to peg ourselves in competitive. Of course, Tommy has the top eight at uh, at Gen Con, which is a, a really good feat. And of course, he's done well at other games too. Yeah. Where you know I had no background, and I don't think anybody necessarily put this pressure on me to go five one to make top 16 to make day two whatever it might have been except yourself <laughs> yeah except myself yeah. so I, I definitely felt that pressure going into the last game of like i need to win this yeah like i need yeah. like i need to do this you know just so i can say i went five one so it looks better and people maybe listen to yeah. <laughs> listen to what i have to say more or anything like that but i mean ultimately i have fun so even if we gain no listeners from anything i did today like it doesn't matter yeah but I, I could feel that pressure but then it's actually really funny because i could also hear mr chip on my own other shoulder <laughs> saying like jack it doesn't matter like just go out have fun yep i was like thanks chip i was like screw you chip i need to win you know what screw yeah. <laughs> put you down for a second mr chip i gotta win this one <laughs> yeah, yeah i'll pick you back up after yeah because <laughs> yeah. i remember after rochester making the bubble he's like oh man you had fun don't worry about it and like, like you can't up. win everything <laughs> And I was like, I'll bring that voice back if I lose. But until I, yeah. if I keep winning, goodbye. <laughs> yeah. See, I, the only competitive like wins I even have are more in like the war gaming categories. I've done well in those at Gen Con at, at their worlds and things like that, like War Machine. But um, yeah, Tommy. The, the big question now is though, like, is Tommy's top eight at North American Championship better than Jack's top sixteen at Worlds? And it's tough because like, no more people at North America. <laughs> They had like 320 people. You guys had like 289. So I don't know, man. Uh, mine's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tommy's Absolutely. not here tonight. Jack is totally the new the new uh, business in town and he wins. So Tommy, you suck. Hands down. Yep. Fact. Absolutely. <laughs> but so that, that brings the day, uh, the end to my day one, ending five and one, losing to the only six and oh. So I don't, you know, as I mentioned, when I lost to him, I was worried about how you do, how they would do my strength of schedule. So I finished fourth overall that day. And uh, awesome. yeah, only loss was to Edwin. And, you know, even even if he 0 3 the next day, losing to a 6 0 on day one is, isn't anything to, yeah. uh, to be ashamed about. Yeah, that's good. Um, so I guess we go to my part where I get to talk about something that I witnessed on stream that I was not a huge fan of. Um, and it really doesn't have anything to do with this particular tournament. It's just a general 
message to FFG, to the community, to everybody. And I don't know if I'm the right person to be saying this, but someone has to be saying this. And I think Jack can help me out saying it. I know Scott's been championing it on the Facebook page. I know Tommy agrees with me. So do you want to lay down the situation, what happened with Joe on stream for me, Jack? Yeah. So our buddy Joe happened to get put on the official FFG stream on day one. Uh, day 1A, again, is the only day that they actually streamed Destiny for day one. Yeah. Um, and he got put on there. He was playing his Dark and Seven Sister, and he played a a player doing against Thronthausen, uh, I believe was the deck that he was playing. Yep. And round one, the guy played a Chance Cube, rolled out, didn't pay for it the entire round. So eventually he ends the round with... Um, he ends around with two resources because he took three and then played a Baton. So he ends around at uh, plus one resource really from what he what he should have been mm -hmm. and then the second round he proceeds to roll out the character with chance i don't remember which character it was but the character with chance on them and didn't pay until after after he had seen what it was so of course the text on chance cube says that it has to be before so if somebody technically rolls it rolls it out and doesn't pay for it beforehand um that it would have to be returned to your hand regardless of the fact that it was already right. rolled out right so. And to, to preface this entire small rant that I'm about to go on, this has nothing to do with whether Joe lost the game or won. He's obviously our friend. We're obviously biased toward Joe. Has he lost. He lost. <laughs> he did lose. Has nothing to do with the fact that he lost. It also has nothing to do with the fact that his opponent did this. Because we all reports have we've been heard this guy is a super nice dude. It hundred percent in my mind and everyone else's was a complete mistake. An honest mistake. There is no intent to cheat. This man does not deserve to be witch hunt. Does not deserve anything like that. He 100% seemed like a perfectly fair, in you know, full of integrity player against this. What it has to do with is the fact that there is a judge watching this game, literally standing on the stream, watching the game, and this this misplay or this illegal play happens. Uh, the judge doesn't step in to do anything. And some players are saying, uh, you know, the player should be responsible for the game. Um, you know, both players need to be responsible for both effects, and that makes sense. Um, but uh, when it literally in the FFG tourney doc, it, we can go to what judge says in the second paragraph, the first sentence, when a judge is observing a game or an issue is brought to his or her attention, the judge should inform players when they are not following the game's rules. So as clear as day, whether this – you know, whether either player realized or not, the judge obviously missed this or, you know, saw it and figured he shouldn't intervene, but that is flat out wrong. So if a judge is watching something go wrong, even if the players agree that something's different, can't happen. And obviously Joe should have solved this mistake. Obviously his players should have solved this mistake. But even more, obviously, these players are going to be nervous. This is Worlds. This is like the biggest tournament they've gone to. It doesn't matter if it's Worlds. It doesn't matter if it's a Galactic Qualifier, another premier event. It doesn't matter. It is a huge event. And these guys had like four or five cameras on them. It's this was Joe's second match. He's 0 1. They already have a loss. Like, this is an important match. So, other people were saying, uh, it's really not that important of a match. You know, it's it's not a, a top 16 match. Who, who really cares about this? Or, you know, don't act like that. But, I mean, this is like imagined. So, Jack, like you're, you're saying, you had people from Brazil here in Minnesota, right, to play this game. Yeah. So, yeah, people from all over. I mean, imagine you're zero and one and you lose your second game due to something like this. And you flew from Brazil. I mean, Joe flew from New Jersey, but it doesn't matter. It's any premier event. You, you went out of your way to go to this event. And then the people who make the game and assign judges have a judge that just won't intervene with and a really important rule. In my opinion, like this is, this is a huge situation. One resource can make or break everything, right? One resource is three points in your list. If you want to put profitable connections in, right? Like, that's huge. So I just think it's like important to stress overall, like mistakes are going to happen. There is no way you're going to catch every mistake that happens at a tournament. I mean, it's just not feasibly possible, but when a judge is watching a game and sees a mistake, there has to be some kind of step in there. If obviously it perfect world, right? He sees it. He instantly says, Hey, you have to pay that resource. That would be, that'd be perfect. Right. Uh, I'd be returned to hand actually at that or point. If, I think, or for the after one, if you rolled in, right? Or he, he has well, a yeah, hand. You, yeah, if you roll in, because it says before the the wording on chance cube. So any for specific this specific situation, before you activate attached character, return this upgrade to your hand unless you spend one resource. Right. So it's before you roll your dice. So if you roll your dice and didn't spend it, 
technically has to be uh, returned because you didn't spend that resource before right. and ideally, you activated. Ideally, that he catches it on that spot, right? And then yeah. you can fix it. But when there is no repercussions down the line of them not catching a mistake like this, and this doesn't just – this isn't just this scenario. This isn't about Joe and this guy. This has nothing to do with this game. I'm just saying in general – down the line, when something like this happens and there is no repercussions, what is actually happening is an illegal play is happening, whether the intent is to cheat or whether it's an honest mistake. Either way, the result's the same. An advantage is gained in this game by that player, regardless of if he's trying to cheat or if he honestly made a mistake. An advantage is gained. And the other result of it is no repercussions are had. So this is literally rewarding sloppy play. I mean, this guy forgot to do something and gets a resource for it. It is that's crazy. Like now you're rewarding things that it, you, there's no repercussion at all for something like this. And I, I'm not the guy to say what the repercussion should be. It definitely shouldn't be like DQ'd from the event. I'm not saying anything like that, but like, is a game loss that ridiculous of a thing to have here? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I, I, that's, that's tough for me. Like I don't, and I'll say, I guess for this guy and put it into his words, he didn't realize his mistake until the day was over. Like, you know, he, he didn't really check his phone and nobody came up to him and told him. And he came up to Joe later uh, on Sunday and was like, hey, man, like I didn't find out till late, way later. If I would have realized after that match or something like that, I would have uh, given you the win like that. That would have been on me. That would have been my mistake. So, I mean, even the person that made the mistake and made that issue is saying that he should have lost that game because of that mistake. Yeah. And that, and it was big and and it wasn't something that didn't. Basically, so yeah, he ended the round with two resources. He goes into the next round with four, and the next round is when he plays um, three steps ahead, right? Three steps ahead and is able to use that extra resource for the three side on the baton, I believe, that round. Yeah. And so then he does a three on the baton, two range, two range from Talzin, and then kills off Joe's seven sister. And if it was a two, 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 then that's not too big of a deal. Yeah, she would have a health left, and it was all just, his dice are gone. And it's again, it's not yeah. even like like this situation. And it's so hard to play that. Like, go back in time. What would it? What would the game be like? But it's just the fact that sloppy play has no repercussions and is actually just giving players advantage. So now, not again, nothing to do with this guy. But any player can say, "Oh, I just forgot to pay it," and if they don't get caught, they get an advantage. If they do get caught nothing even happens <laughs> like there's no repercussions so you're yeah. incentivizing like people to try this like and it's just such a bad bad thing to ha- introduce into the game it's just there has to be some type of repercussions for something here and it's just it, it seems like that was at the biggest premiere event or any premiere event i feel like ffg's op continues to let people down in that fashion yeah, well, and uh, I won't say the guy's official name, but uh, most people, when you think of somebody trying to push the limits of what you can get away with, of forgetting to do, you know, a certain person might come to mind. And this isn't the person that was that we're talking about that was involved in the Chance Cube incident, but he was involved in other incidents at, at Worlds this year, and he's been involved in other issues years before. And it's just like he's, he still has not faced any repercussions. Yeah. And it's just like, why? Like, if I can constantly start to do little things to push my advantage in a game, and FFG isn't gonna uh, do anything about it, why? Why not push the envelope? Yeah. I would never do that because I'm not like I wouldn't want a mall's mat. I wouldn't want top sixteen if I cheated to get my way there. Um, yeah, and it'd be perfect if everyone was like that, you know. But it's just it's not the world, and it's it, people get competitive, people get swept up in the moment in in the prizes, and people want to do the best they can. And being competitive is a good thing. But when there's no repercussions for things, and I, and I come from a, a weird background of sports where I play self-officiated sports uh, and like at high competitive levels, they are just awful to play. And that's why like this almost feels like it, there's no repercussions. And it's the same thing in my sports life where there's no repercussions. And it's why I fall off competitively and things because I'm just like people can get away with stuff. And I also just suck. But other than that, you know, like people can just get away with stuff. And it's just like it shouldn't be there should be. It's mostly the, it's the sucking mainly the part. sucking part. Other than that, it's just the there needs to be a clearer guidelines, and that's the only final thought I'll have on that is just what actually should happen in specific situations like this need to be more clear and cut in the FFG tourney document, in my opinion. I mean, if you think we're totally wrong with this, and I think Jack is mostly on board with what I'm saying. I know Tommy is. I've talked to him all week about it. 
like start a discussion with us. Like we want to talk about it. It's, you know, it's a, it's a community game. You know, we want to talk about what you guys think about it, but like, you know, I tell me what, what you would do. How would you make the FFG document better? How would you, you know, make more clear guidelines? Or do you think there even needs to be more clear guidelines? I don't know. And, you know, like Jack's saying, most of his experience are perfect at, at Worlds. You know, he had a blast and the games were friendly and all that, but it's not everyone's experience. So. Yep. Agreed. That'll be the end of that. Cool. Cool. You, you got I everything off your chest. It's just like, <laughs> come on, dude. And listen, it's nothing to do with this guy. This dude, dude sounded like a genuine sweetheart, but like there needs to be guidelines, people. Too much going on. Not just at Worlds, at every tournament. Get out of here with that. Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll move on to my day two, the Swiss rounds. Who cares about this? Let's talk about Joe again. <laughs> yeah, um, dude, I don't think he yeah. wants that actually. Yeah, Joe's pretty bad. All right, day two, <laughs> day two. <laughs> um, I, I well, I guess for people that are interested, Joe did end up going two and four with Tarkin seventh, and I will say I think that's like three wins below his his skill level. I really did expect Joe to go bare minimum four and two probably five and one um i just think at that point to go oh and two and know about that whole chance cube thing he was kind of a little bit on tilt and just not playing his best the rest of the day you know starting oh two so just t- tough for him but he stayed through and he was like he was like my dad the rest of the weekend man he was like carrying my bag when i would walk away <laughs> just making sure i had everything it was good yeah he's good at events like that man he's he's supportive dude good guy yeah um cool so yeah, day day two, Swiss. At this point, like I said, five and one. I know because of my strength of schedule from the first day, basically the strength of schedule was reset. So you had a zero strength of schedule going in to day two. But the tiebreaker at the end of the three matches to de- decide exactly where it is, instead of extended strength of schedule, it was strength of schedule from yesterday, is I believe hmm. how they explain it. So your strength of schedule from yes, the day one did, still didn't matter. It just was wiped for your overall one for today, if that gotcha. makes sense. So that's how they did that. Um, and yeah, so first match, there was one person I didn't want to play. Well, there were a few matchups I didn't want to play, but person-wise uh, was Paul from Arrowbrook Gaming. Uh, so I have was able to talk to and be friendly with him and Drew, who were both there at Worlds. And, you know, uh, you, know you, don't, you just don't want to play your friends, you know, and people yeah. that you know. And of course, I look... I didn't really remember his last name and I just look up, I see Paul. I'm like, Oh, it's him, isn't it? And I'm walking <laughs> by and he, he sees me he just shakes his head. Cause I had a good matchup. I mean, Yoda Hondo, I have a pretty good win percentage against with Sabine Ezra. It's just a matter of Ezra stealing the resource back after I pay for it. And I'm still able to do my things and, and not have to pay him off all the time. Yeah. But it was, it, he's Paul's a great player. He five and one on day one, a, and it was a super tight match. Early on, I could have already lost. He rolled out Yoda and got uh, with two four speeds and got all specials, basically. Uh, like maybe one Yoda wasn't a special. So he would have had four actions and he would have been able to play a light bow on Hondo, activate Hondo and the special chain and kill uh, Sabine. So I knew I basically had to kill Yoda. I had to do out, roll out and do four damage and I got it, killed Yoda. And at that point, he was just fighting from behind. And it was tough for him to call back. He played it well, but it was like funny. Like I said, I don't like playing against my friends. Of course, it's the top level. And above all else, I wouldn't win. I didn't take it easy or anything. But like at one point, I played a hyperspace jump. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, man. And he's like, don't say sorry. I was like, I know. I'm sorry for saying sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Uh, uh, Yeah, it it was just I felt bad, of course. That was the one matchup he wanted to avoid, too, because he knows that Sabine is a tough matchup for him and. You know, of course, part of me is happy because it was a good matchup for me. But like I said, I don't want to play uh, somebody that I know. So yeah, I, I want to know starting the day. And man, the stress this mor- that morning was like through the roof for me because <laughs> I knew I had to go two and one with my two wins being matches seven and eight, and I could lose the last one and still make it in with good strength of schedule. Yep. Because my strength of schedule from day one was great, and my th- strength of schedule if I go two zero and lose the last game, uh, then I would lose to either a eight and one. Yeah, I would lose to an eight and one at that point. So wasn't too worried about it, but yeah, I just, I, I couldn't even think that day. My hands were shaking. I was like showing him cards and you could just see my hands were all wobbly. Yeah. But I got, I got the first win down and I was like, all right, Jack, you just got to do one more. And 
I, I get the pairings, I sit down, and it's another Yoda Hondo. And I just, I was in the zone for this game. I just felt like I made all the right calls. And even when I got up, um, Drew from Arrowbrook Gaming, who sadly did not qualify, going three and three, and then Joe were both behind me watching the games. And they, they were both like, wow, that was pretty, f- like, I pre- pretty much every decision they were like, I agreed with. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, it was just, you know, I was able to maneuver all the, any issues I came into. And that guy started on the back foot and I was able to just keep the pressure on. And, you know, he was able to put a second chance down and force solution stuff, but it was really just him buying time until, you know, he lost. So it was, it was a tough matchup for him again. But at this point, I'm 2-0 and and I pretty much know I'm in whether I win or lose next round. And then match nine, I play the infamous Ezra rookie pilot, hired gun, temple guard, taxter deck. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I knew I didn't. I don't mind vehicles of the standard one, like the Ayla Rose Ezra. I really have a good matchup, I feel, against that because that takes a little bit slower to ramp and it's indirect early. So I'm able to put some damage on Ezra and it's not just... Sabine just taking all the damage, but Taxter, I mean, he's a phenomenal play- player. I don't need to say that. Um, but he, he he also got a really good start, at least it would seem for me, like with double aftermath, there's like, crap, I don't want to kill a character because then he just gets $2 to play whatever's in his hands. Yeah. Uh, you know, he had Rally Aid, and it was just it was tough. Basically, turn two killed. Turn one did no damage, so I'd like to point that out. Turn two did no damage. Turn or Turn one did no damage. Turn two killed Ezra, put three on Sabine, Turn three, he killed Sabine. I was like, all right, cool. Thanks for the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, tax are super friendly. So it was it was like it was nice that, you know, him and I were still able to have conversations about stuff and you know. Yeah. I was asking him, you know, for advice on vehicles and stuff like that, any misplays and stuff like that. We were able to have that conversation and yeah, so I'm two and one at this point, and then the match slip goes up or the final rankings. I come in at number ten yeah. is my spot. Uh, so I was, I was through the moon at that point. Like if you guys listen to me, I would have loved to just get a malls mat. Like that was like my highest goal, but my realistic expectation at the time was to make day two. So to sit here and come 10th after Swiss. Oh man, that was seriously so crazy. I, I couldn't have asked for a better tournament, even just right there. Um, and it was a good thing I had those expectations because top 16 <laughs> was a great smackdown. Oh my gosh. Best of three. It was over in like the 35 minutes. Not even. <laughs> it was, oh my gosh. I think I killed Ezra once. Maybe I played, <laughs> I don't even know if I killed Ezra to be honest. It's that much of a blur. <laughs> I, I played against uh, Joe from Hyperloops, honestly sarcastic. And he was playing Eota, E Ezra rookie pilot and just same thing against Taxter. You know, he scruffied at the right time, got hyper jump or hyperspace jump. You know, he's flooding the board with all these dice. Even if I easy pickings, he's still got like four more dice that can do eight damage to me. Yeah. It's it was just tough. And he even said, like, I think in Discord, it might have been Artificer or Knights of Ren. It's hard to keep them separate at times. He was like, Yeah, with my decks, it means a near auto win. And I was like, not that anybody needs this confirmation, but I can confirm that. Yeah, uh, in case anybody's <laughs> anybody's wondering. Um and, you know, credit to him. He's a great player. So, like, for me to go and ultimately end the day, uh, Swiss won. Uh, day one, I lost to Edwin, the eventual champion. Day two, I lost to Taxter in the ninth match. And top 16, I lose to uh, Joe. You know, honestly, sarcastic. Like, I can't I can't be upset about any of that. And then that's not to say if I were to lose to anybody else, I have a right to hang my head or something because they don't have names. But these guys have performed well. I mean, Edwin qualified from winning a Galactic Qualifier, and then obviously everybody knows how how good Taxter and uh, Joe are. So yeah. it, was, it was a really good tournament for me. I was really happy with how it did it. Of course, getting O2'd with two complete SmackDowns was not the way I wanted to end my day, but, man, it was crazy. Yeah. I, I really couldn't have asked for a, a better a better Worlds tournament for yeah. me. It, it was crazy. Awesome. I mean, even yeah, regardless of the people's names, all three of those people made top 16 that day. You know what I mean? So regardless of even yeah. their past performances, yeah. they were on point with their current decks playing that. And it's funny looking at your day two overall. It's like you were like Yoda Hondo, Yoda Hondo, and you're like, I love this matchup. Yes. And then you got pretty much variations of the same thing that you didn't love right after. So it's definitely a matchup thing. You know what I mean? Like it, I totally forgot to mention this, but I think I had my top 16 match coming because at the end of day one, six round, I sit down across from Joe and I was like, oh, come yeah. on. Like I'm four and one. Oh, great. There goes my top 16. Yeah. <laughs> and 
I'm sitting down, we're taking out our decks, and then a judge, basically in the room that we were, there was like a wall and then a door to the other side, which is where like the headquarters was, almost where they were printing match slips and updating everything, all their computers and right. stuff were. He busts out. He's like, do not play yet. Do not play yet. We're having repairings. And I just breathed a <laughs> sigh of relief. I was like, oh my gosh. And I had to thank uh, Mike uh, the rebel spy from Jedi trials, because apparently it was his name that was left off the <laughs> list. I was like, thank you so much for ha- not having your name and, and repairing us. Cause then I got repaired to the Obi Maz that I, I eventually beat. But I was like, I, I knew I didn't stand a chance against Joe in that, yeah, matchup, that matchup. So is not doing any favors for you. Nope. No. So yeah, that was, it eventually came back and, and Joe got me. He was one that ended, ended my, uh, my time at worlds. But like I said, man, it was, That's it was awesome. phenomenal. I couldn't have That's asked a for a better book. week. And this like too. Yeah. And, and I just like so many people have backgrounds of, of these games. Like so many other people I've talked to that are performing well have played magic for like 10, 15 years. Like I haven't, yeah. I've <laughs> like, I haven't really played any games. Like I picked up and played magic a few times. I picked up and played uh, Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon like very, very casually, maybe maximum 10 games in each. Thank God, dude. You know, not bad. even just casually, just like barely. <laughs> It's like very minimal for them. So, you know, just for me to come here and, and perform well is just Huge. like, it, it's just awesome. Like, I was just really happy for my my progress of, you know, store championships of like Qui-Gon Ray always, again, technically on the bubble yeah. on those too, right? Uh, I would I would have bad SOS because I'd usually lose early and then win out. And, you know, going to Rochester, getting ninth, going to Connecticut, getting 13th. It was just nice to... uh you know, of course, I feel bad for all the people, all the seven and twos that missed out. But it was it was great for me to finally just nab that and get into the top. Yeah, 16. I mean, a few thoughts. Just like, first off, we were all super proud. We were all freaking out. I mean, my fiance was making fun of me constantly. She's like, why do you keep checking your phone? I was like, I have to know how he's doing. Like, <laughs> like me and Tommy were wearing our golden dice shirts. We were, we were chilling. We were feeling good. We were, we were very excited for you and everyone over there. But I mean. Super awesome world overall. I know, uh, I know another thing Scott's been kind of championing on the Facebook page was the strength of schedule thing because that is kind of – so, I mean, if you do one more round, right, then there is no yeah. – like you're cutting out some, uh, what, six and – or I'm sorry, seven and threes then and like maybe one or two seven and threes is squeaking in. But like cutting out like all those seven and twos, if you just do one more round, most of those seven and twos are playing against each other unless unless it's Tome. Then the, the first place is obviously going to play the last place because that makes sense. But, you know, most of the most of the seven twos <laughs> are going to play each other, cuts it down. But like at the same time, you said you got there at nine and you left at seven. Like how much more destiny do these people have to play? You know what I mean? So. I get strength yeah, schedule can be a pain. I get being on the bubbles annoying, but like at the same time, man, like this is a, this is a long weekend, a long day, long tournament. So I feel like it sucks, but it is what it is. It is, it is weird that they added a whole nother yeah. day. Like last year, I believe it was just day one, a day one B mm-hmm. and then top cut where uh, day two, whereas this, they added another day, but didn't add another round. So that's almost a hundred more people and not adding another round. So I do think that is weird. And I guess ultimately adding one more round is really just another yep. 35, 40 minutes. Uh, cause, well, they, they were saying it, you so could just I'm, cut the top 32, but that's adding another best of three rounds. So that's adding a ton of more time. So like that's 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 what I'm kind of worried about at that point. So it, if you add a top 32 instead, you're adding just a significant amount more time. If you do add just another round, you're adding another 30 minutes. But like at the same time, there's always going to be a bubble. Like there's never not going to be a bubble unless you have a perfect amount of people at a tournament yeah. and stuff like that. And you you've eaten the bubble before. You've you know you've been right on the outside. Tommy's been right on the outside. Everyone has their fair share of being on the outside of the bubble. So. Yeah, it it, yeah. it happens. I mean, it sucks to have it happen on the yep. biggest stage, but you know, I again, I th- I'm probably on the side of adding another Swiss round. Yeah. I don't know if I had top yeah. 32 because, like it's you so said, that add the whole that's like an hour and a half um, that it would add. Yeah, yeah. Overall, but I think FFG did was, a great job. From what I mean, from stream sites, I know people were racking on the commentators. Like, I feel like they did a great job for th- most of it. Prize support was awesome. Again, the only thing I can complain about is some of the judging things that have happened. But I mean. If you want to talk about the meta, like you can't, you can't think of a more diverse meta. Would you have twelve out of sixteen decks were different in the top sixteen, right? Or yeah, twelve different decks in the top sixteen. The repeats were uh, there were three Sabine Ezra's in the top sixteen. There were two Ray Aylas and two Boba Seventh. So that's seven repeat decks. Okay, so then there's what nine? And there's 
nine other uniques, decks. but then you add three to that, so there's twelve unique deck variants, of course, with some of them. Yeah. Repeating. Um, but yeah, I mean that's just awesome. And it, the only thing that stinks, but we've talked about it here, is just like it, and you we have these images right up that you posted right in front of us of yeah. the overall breakdown of hero character color and villain character color. And as expected, red was just like man. rest in peace, man. Like God, especially on the hero side. We got eight percent on the hero side, twenty one on villains. Overall, that's like a fourteen point five percent. That that hurts me so badly. Like, and it's even like both sides, like they're the same like Yeah. It's twenty one percent, but it's probably all like the same like on red villain, who is it? Like Phasma? Yeah. Um and Sienna. Like I know there were a few OTKs. Like what else? Well, I guess first order stormtrooper was in there. Yeah, he made a few, and then on red, um, like hero, what's it? Rookie pilot and rose, I guess. Like, and maybe if somebody showed up with a po two, yeah. but I don't think there are any po twos at day two. So these break down, like, yeah. So man. I'll read off the breakdowns really quick. Uh, quick, these are day two. So I'll start off with the villain. Villain had twenty eight percent yellow, twenty one percent red, and fifty one percent blue. And day two hero character breakdown was thirty seven percent yellow, eight percent red, and fifty five percent blue. And it's really funny for the hero. I don't think FFG wanted to show the difference between the 37 and 55 to the eight. It's like the bars yeah. 37 and 55 are like, exa- it's almost like it was 37, 38 or something like that. Like they are so close. Yep. Meanwhile, half the field is more than half the field is blue. Yeah. I mean, as to be expected on both sides, like there's, if you're going to make a competitive deck, like you're, you're going to have blue in that really. Yep. And I mean, the, the final table was, <laughs> mono blue versus mono blue so like yeah, yeah. i hate this game and i quit i'll see you guys later <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it was crazy and that ffg on their twitter and i don't know if eventually made it to their facebook page or anything but they have breakdowns of all characters and most popular battlefields and stuff like that so there's some good stuff if you guys are looking to uh to check that yeah for sure for sure um, i remember when the final table went up tommy's like oh look it's mono blue versus mono blue can i have all my cards back <laughs> like <laughs> I know he was gonna rage quit, but I mean, it's it's Star Wars. It's blue. I get it. Whatever. Yeah, the game sucks. I mean, I and to be fair, I guess like it was close to being like if you take those matchups and swap them in the top four. Like if Mike played the Ray Ayla yeah. and if Joe played the Kylo Anakin, there's a chance that it's Joe versus Mike in the final. And of course, that's dis, that's discounting the pilots of those other decks and just looking at the characters. Just the matchups. So that's, that, that's a big thing to, that's a big thing that you have to, that I have to know is that I'm t- not talking about the pilots. I'm talking about the, the pairings, but if that switches around, like I said, I think Sabine Ezra is pretty decent against stairs and I'd assume Joe's deck is pretty good against Kylo Anakin, depending if he can avoid any big CQAs or anything like yeah. that. So it's just interesting stuff like that, that it, it could have been uh non blue or no, I guess Yoda would have been in there, but, that's still, I mean, that's a, that's still a good point. I mean, yeah, and it's all about who you get paired up against, right? Edwin, Edwin said he played one uh, Ray Ayla the whole game, the whole whole tournament, and it was uh, the final game he had to it's play. So one, good yeah. timing for Kylo two to be there. So yeah, that definitely. Um, cool. So that's that's a little bit of a breakdown. Again, I think it was fantastic. I mean, ultimately, like you can't ask for for a better meta. Of course, there's some issues that you guys might have, and some people might not like that there were three Sabine Ezra's and then two and then one. Like, I mean, ultimately I don't think any deck was oppressive to the point. Like there were a lot of certain decks, but ultimately the top I think was the the players. Like it it just came down to the better players were making the better cuts, especially made top 16. Then you were like the best player in the world or something. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Possible. Top 16 at least. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But on the interesting part, I guess, so we're like, way behind in terms of podcast for the spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't think we ever even talked about he's casting. Good. I talked about him. I wrote an article. Read it. It he seems cool. He's like a mini palpatine with still like almost yeah, as much I health. Was, I was yellow. <laughs> I was expecting a red cat um, cool with it. Yeah, I could see them yeah. going either way. And I I was gonna dig it either way. So he's cool. Uh, I don't have him. What's he? One range, two range, discard, discard, resource blank. And it's like when you resolve this die, you can either deal an erect to direct damage to an opponent direct, yeah. or discard the top yep. card of the deck. Yeah, yeah, discards. Um, and he's like 10, 14, yeah, I might, think. Yellow, 10, 11, 10 14, health. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. He's good. Yeah. He's he's a nice, and I was talking about in that article I wrote just about like the 14 point slot, like that mid-range type character, you know. 
uh, some more options other than Yoda, Seven Sister, Ayla, you know, all the good ones. So I, I like that non blue. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to see some play. He's cool. Yeah, cool. So the ones that popped in on the stream are the ones that have been floating around. And the first one, uh, I'll read his card. It's Plo Koon. He's a Jedi protector. He's got 10 health. His cost is 1114. His dice sides are one melee, two melee, one focused, one shield, one resource, blank. He's a hero rare, and he's a character dash Jedi. And his text reads, this character has the abilities of each non-unique character you have in play. This just seems like a fun character. There's really oh. no way around it. This, I, like, this is so flavorful to me. And first thing that pops into my mind is uh, Padawan and Instructor paired with him. Because you roll him out, you get a two melee and a blank. Okay, flip yep. to the melee. And then also just playing like an Ancient on him for one or an Heirloom on him for two first turn or something like that just seems really good. On top of having a Padawan. People have talked about a little bit about double Padawan with him. But to me, I don't know if you'll actually get like that's so much resource saving that I don't know if you'll actually be able to like make use of it. The thing with like Eric Wainwright's like double Padawan Ayla deck, like he plays two upgrades a turn. If you're now trying to abuse this, you're going to need to play three upgrades a turn. And like, what are the chances you get this yeah. stuff into your hand? Like you would need to play 18 upgrades. <laughs> yeah, really. You're going to need to play like a Shoto or like say an ancient on the Padawan an ancient on the other Padawan and like a Shoto on Plo Koon. Or if you want to, uh, with reaping the crystal into an heirloom on Plo Koon, cause it, it stacks. So it'd be a decrease by two. So it's like uh, the odds of all that setting up and actually taking advantage of his character ability and being able to stack two doesn't seem likely. So that's why I think a little bit of the Jedi instructor, might be yeah. might be the better. Of course, this is they could have come out with a blue non unique character that's bonkers good, and it's just like why would I ever run Padawan or Jedi Instructor with them? So right, that's just for me. Or, to be seen. Know, we could run non blue characters with them too. No, stop stop. Being there's so, no point. Oh, being so blue. Yeah, let me run. He Rebel gets the ability. Oh yeah, yeah, so I can see, guard. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Right. All right. Well, so the Jedi acolyte too, though, because the turns is like ones and twos into you know higher values. That's pretty cool, right? Jedi acolyte with him, but he puts him at that nine point cost, which is a little weird. That's blue. So that so. Now you're sitting at you have seven. Yeah, yes. I know. But when I get to non blue. <laughs> Okay, there is a there's an image floating around the web right around Facebook saying here's all the possible pairings. I just want to let those people know they were wrong. That is not all the possible pairings because a the obvious one they forgot the Jawa. So you could copy the Jawa's action as his ability because everybody wants to do that. Okay, I'm just saying <laughs> they were wrong, Jack. Secondly, they were wrong again because if you're playing Plo Koon and Finn one and get a separatist landing craft out and then put a battle droid into play, you could also copy the battle droid's ability. I, I'm just giving people options. Oh. Jack, all right. Wait, what are the battle droids read? Is that, that, it, that it doesn't? Do it wouldn't for? work. <laughs> it would do nothing. But he would technically have it, Jack. <laughs> After you, people need to know all their options yeah, and the, that was a lie the image was a lie people were not giving good yep. information so that's what we're here for we want to give you every option you have shane i don't know where this destiny community be without your inside knowledge of <laughs> six point characters that abilities wouldn't even matter yep that's what i'm saying that's going to um, revolutionize the well if you right, do we, we can... with them you this is very relevant for the next spoiler Right, oh. you can run Jawa with them and then play Plo Koon Starfighter. So when yeah. you activate Plo Koon, you could discard this and get a resource. <laughs> Perfect. So Plo Koon Starfighter is a unique support vehicle. Is it a three cost? So it's forever, never going to be played like all the other three cost blue hero supports. Perfect. <laughs> right in the <laughs> it's, category. It's got a yeah. I know exactly where it's going. <laughs> it's got to a two range yeah to flockton it's got a two range uh three for one ranged a disrupt a shield a resource and a blank it says after you activate the support you may turn one of your non-unique character dice to any side if you uh spot plo Koon, you may resolve that die so i want it, to like this i do too the fact that it is a three cost and has a pay side i just don't i don't like it too much yep Paid side, three cost, uh, ability is all right. And if you're going for a vehicle deck and you're trying to get this in there, you're probably not running Plo Koon. You know what I think the problem is? And same thing with the uh, ETA, ETA, is that what it's called? That Interceptor? It's like the bottom four sides of those cards or three sides of those cards are like awful, man. Like a Disrupt and a Shield for three resources is just so... So like you're, you want to see the two damage. You want to see the three damage and you can pay for it. But like you never want to resolve a three cost 
support for a shield, a disrupt, or yeah. a resource, like ever. Just go like, the air speed around. Just give me like a blank. Give me two blanks and bump it yeah. down to two and keep the pace side or something. I like. Yeah. I'm not a card game designer, but if you keep turning out these three cost blue hero supports, like they're just going to keep doing the same thing. Like I, I couldn't even tell you what the one from Spirit was. Yeah. Like it's and, just and, and the ETA they, sole play in the beginning because yeah. it was a three cost in hero vehicles, but at like I don't think Taxa ran it. I don't think Joe ran it. It's just it just you know, doesn't. Yeah. There's so many better options at two and so many better options at three. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's very true, and it's the same thing. Like the the wheel bike that they that they put out too. It's like another three cost, and it's not just like blue is struggling. Hero blue with the vehicles, and villain blue because they have the the shuttle thing that copies your uh, character specials. You remember that? Uh, yeah. Kylo's shuttle or whatever. Like like they're they're just like struggling to get supports in the right spot, other than the ones that are obviously in the right spot <laughs> the ones that are y wings and air speeders and you yeah know, the moldy crow or whatever it's called the, the modified hawk like stuff like that and, and they've put yeah. out recent ones but they've put out so many that are bad <laughs> way more that have been bad that are good and that's going to happen not every card can be competitive but thank god this thing's only a rare and not a legendary <laughs> yes absolutely I, it's just it stinks because it's just there's still no blue vehicle you really want to play yep. like Agreed. it's just i mean all the vehicles are either red right now they're all red or gray like i don't even think there's any yellow ones that you like you're not playing the old falcon or the new falcon really yeah i like the new falcon i have it in like a deck but it's like yeah it's just that and the speeder tank but they're kind of pipe dreams like are they really better than just playing a y-wing at i mean yeah a uh, one falcon's four one the other one's five and the speeder tank's five but it's like yeah, yeah. saving all those resources to put it just into that where i could play almost two y-wings at that point especially with a rally eight or something yeah i don't know and of course, there's like I, I do like from our local meta rigs ran the Hera, Maz, Yoda deck, and that turned out big vehicles. And I do like that version of it, but that was very like specific to him. Yep. Um, and he did well with it. I mean, he topped eight at at New Jersey. I don't know if he went to Maryland or anything, but it's just I mean, it's not like he ran the ETA interceptor. He was still running. <laughs> he wasn't running blue vehicles. Yep, I agree. So no point. So that is all about Plo Koon and his Starfighter. I really like the character. I want to like the Starfighter, but I just I don't. I do like the the spot Plo Koon mechanic that they're playing with still. You know, the spot Grievous was prior. Yeah. So I, I do like that they're introducing these type of things. They're playing with the, the elements they have in the game, and they're opening it up a little bit more. So I like that. Cool. And we got our last spoiler on here, the Darksaber. So this is a four-cost neutral yellow upgrade weapon. It's a legendary and unique, so you can only have one in play. And it's got a two melee, a three melee, a two focus, one discard, one shield, one resource. And its hex says that it has redeploy. And before you resolve this die, increase its value by one if attached character is 15 or more points, or by two instead if the uh, attached character is 20 or more points. Uh, all I can say is that I'm happy that FN was errated a little bit. Um, I don't need him swinging for a three or a four. Uh, or well, I guess, well, he got a two point increase. So it wouldn't have mattered anyways, but still like him rolling out like yeah. a two focus. And it's just like, Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This being neutral, you know, legendary card, it's, it's going to see some play, I think. And, you know, it's a part of the problem with the four cost upgrades that have come out like grand Moff and rebellion leader, things like that. They, they don't have redeploy you know it, the redeploy is so key for cards like this when you invest four dollars on a character like you need that to carry over you need to do something substantial so making it have redeploy is awesome uh its ability is pretty crazy right i mean obviously on a 20 point character they're, they're trying to trying to give some hope back to those big little lists a little bit here you know i mean the, this probably is just going to be better in like a three wide deck that i can just keep moving over but i mean it's pretty yeah. cool uh, I'm a fan. I think the direct comparison, like what for, there's four, only four cost redeploy that I can currently think of is the bowcaster. And I mean, you could kind of say uh, like one of one with a force that's not really redeployed becomes its own. There's support. the uh, the vibro cutlass that's also yellow. Vibro cutlass too. Four. Yeah. So that's those are like the comparisons, and it's like, is it directly better than either of them? Um, for the bowcaster, I'd probably say it it is because its value can go up to a four, a free four, where there's a bowcaster has a four for one. They can go up to a five. Right? Yeah, yeah, it can if go up to five. Point. Yeah, um, and the yeah. bowcaster has that plus three, and it also has that garbage special where it's like unblockable. Yeah, paid side. And, yeah. One unblockable to two different characters. Like, thank you. Um, thank you for four cost. You, <laughs> um, as for the dark saber, yeah, I don't think it has room to play 
unless that character is 15 or 20, like, or even more so 20, like at 15, yep. I would resolve any side. If anything under that, like I wouldn't pay four to resolve one discard, but I'd maybe pay four to resolve a two discard depending on the situation. And then yeah. at 20, it's like, okay, I'll take three shields. Okay. I'll take $3. Okay. You know, it's like, okay, I'll do uh four focus and then smack you for like 19 damage with all my other dice. So yeah. it'll be interesting. It's like, and then you look at the deck that like runs the Vibra Cutlass. It's like, would this go on Boba's seven? Maybe the guy, maybe it goes right, or, right in over it. Um, and the interesting thing is yeah. too, is that it can, it's like, okay, now it doesn't have the pay cost and you could play it on seven sister, but then she's 14 points. So you're, you're not going to get any benefit of the card. Yeah. You just get the redeploy and then hope it goes to Boba or something. But this is like interesting. I can see it having like a, a deck where it's like a one of in, but I'm not sure it's necessarily like a meta warping type card or anything like that. Yeah, no, it's just cool. Uh, you know, it's it's a neat card. It's obviously not going to go with Sabine, even though she's on the art. But, like, you know, I, I feel like this we really need to see. I, I like theory crafting, but, like, we really do need to see what other big characters are coming out with this in mind. Because this could be huge. Like, it yeah, it could be a really important one of in some decks. You know, not a, yep. a two of. I can't see it being that. But, I mean, it could be a very important. It can be on light side or dark side. And if they put out these other characters i know there's those grievous fanboys the ones who really think grievous is going to be impactful like if you're playing yellow and grievous this this could be a card for that you know and it's it's definitely not going to be a card that you're building up four dollars to get out and then hard playing it like it's going to be an overwrite a two upgrade for this card you know what i mean it's always going to be something like that most of the time and that it could be worth it um um, i think we have to wait a little bit but it gives me more hope than uh the this the uh wheel bike that's also a legendary so at least it's cooler than that. Yeah, definitely. But dude, Sabine, all you got to do is tech in Infamous instead of running interference now. Then yeah, that's it. Override this. Ambush action. Tap Infamous. Roll out. Resolve for five melee. And then leave, all, the days leave all your range freaking. damage out there. <laughs> that's perfect, yeah. I, I, just, I really just miss the days when like Sabine actually used her, her ability to put thermal weapons on her. Yeah, I remember when Gosh. people like... I, you remember thermal paint? Yeah, you know, thermal happens? paint. Or even like now people maybe yeah. do like one thermal if they're worried about vehicles, but it's like even then, eh. Yeah. <laughs> I miss those days. But yeah, man, that's all the spoilers we got. Unless anybody else still has any. I don't think unless they you do. want to send us some. Yeah, unless you want to send us some. <laughs> um, cool. So I guess one thing I want to point out too is that we're so we're at like an hour and 17 as I'm saying this. It might be edited down, so it might be shorter for you guys to come up. But there were two weird uh rules that were brought up regarding a snare play as some of you saw on stream and also a mislead one that you might have saw on stream because i was on chance cube stream um i actually emailed jeremy about them just for further clarification so if that comes in i'll let you guys know but that's something we'll also touch on next week and that we're not not ignoring or anything in case you were curious about that but i just gotta say this week was a blast yeah i just got i got to go out i got to meet some patrons and you know go to the knights of Ren artificery meetup and just talk to them so like you know, shout out to John and Mike, two of our patrons. I was able to go out and meet and, you know, just all the other content creators like Knights of Ren, Artificery, the Hyperloops, Double Blanks, Jedi Trials, Three Man Meta, I Rebel, Pierce the Bach, uh, Arrowbrook Gaming, Your Destiny. It was just like, like so many people were there. And part of me thinks that, and so I was even talking to Sugi. It's like interesting that a non podcaster, non content creator won despite like so many of them being there. And I think that's kind of good. I think that might give hope to the non <laughs> content creators out that all of them necessarily needed it, but I think it's just kind of interesting. So I love it. Well, Shane, honestly, you yeah, like, you if I'm not rooting for Jack, I'm rooting for a random man. I'm rooting from a random dude from Jersey. A random man. dude from Jersey. Yeah. Love so, it. I mean, it was just cool to get out there. Now I, I really didn't get to meet too, you know, too many, uh, really like all of the podcasts. Cause there were so many there. I got a chance to talk to it, like have a few conversations with them, but I mean, Shane, you know me, like, I don't go up to anybody I don't know, but once you know me, I, I don't shut up and I'm oftentimes too loud, but, um, <laughs> it's, it was, it was a blast and it makes it easier when some people like recognize me and came up to me and it was really funny for anybody wondering, my real name is John and I, and I go by Jack <laughs> and Lies. I posted that on Twitter and Facebook and people thought FG, FFG got it wrong and messed my name up. It was, uh, it was really funny though. My go-to is at JFK it was called Jack in case anybody's wondering. And yeah, final world thoughts. It was world thoughts. It was just, it was amazing. It was, it was well run. There were some issues, of course, with the pods, like I said, and 
Sometimes there was enough space for them, but that's probably going growing pain that Jeremy and the rest of FFG is aware of. So I'd expect that to get better as the years go on, and especially the rumors of X Wing getting its own Worlds Week. So yeah, that would really help. And they they posted their numbers, right? Uh, how many games? How many you know? How many players and stuff? And Destiny was they look pretty just good under X Wing you know? from their. I mean, if if their yep. if their bar graphs are as accurate as their he- day two hero breakdown, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it looked like <laughs> Destiny and X Wing were were pretty close and pretty much miles ahead of Imperial Assault Armada and obviously the LCGs. That's the last year. Um, Rest in peace, LCG. But yeah, so that's. That is is that for my world thoughts. I hope I can. Uh, okay, I can't go this year. If my fiance is listening right now, she'd probably stab me if I said I hope I can go next year. <laughs> I'm, yeah, it's I'm getting married happening. on May the fourth, so Shane's probably not going either unless he wants to ditch yeah. me. <laughs> no, nah, I'll, I'll probably be there. <laughs> uh, which one? Uh, that, you know that one. <laughs> that one. The, the one of the ones. Um, Come on, I don't go to tournaments. Get out of here. Yeah, I know. Of course, <laughs> right, we're gonna get you to store championship. I, I'm I'm promising yeah, you I, that. So. I, at least I can have like something under my belt. Like I went one and five at a store championship. <laughs> what did you do? Yeah, really? I mean, so far nobody can say that you, you had a losing record or anything like that. So yeah, there you go. That's true. I'm proud of you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Thank you. So as we close, of course, shout out to all our patrons and we got Ray from Thundershot games is the additional one this week. So, uh, thanks man for supporting us. Of course, anybody, if you guys haven't checked out Thundershot games, definitely go check him out. He's just, Start, he's probably episode four or five of his podcast, and uh, he's doing really well with it. So definitely recommended. Yeah, thanks for playing me on TTS the other night as well, Ray. So let's get another game in soon. Oh, did you smack him? No, it was the the uh, the stream night. Oh, yeah, that's, I, right. Uh, that's right. That yeah, Mal Ketsu, dude. Mal Ketsu put, put some work in that night. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, the week before Worlds, we just didn't have time. Like, I didn't. I was yeah, just so, week. yeah, it was, it was just crazy I mean, you leave on life Monday, so yeah. Or left yeah. on Tuesday. Or Tuesday. Whatever, so. Yeah. So I just didn't have time between getting stuff ready for work for when I was gone because stuff still has to run while I'm gone. And um, yeah, it was just like, I, I don't have time to prep. I don't have time to stay up late and edit. Like, let's just stream. So if you guys are looking to ever stream, I got it set up. At Last time it was just on Twitch, but now next time we stream, it should be on Twitch and YouTube. So if you guys follow us on either of those things or want to follow us on Twitch, you know, you can go check us out there now. We're on Facebook, Twitter, as I mentioned, YouTube, uh, WordPress. I'll be writing up a report in case you prefer to read things. Uh, but at this point in the podcast, I'm assuming you like listening to things. So that's, <laughs> I'll be doing a write-up of Worlds uh, on there so you can keep a uh, lookout for that. As usual, Worlds is over, but you still want to fill out your collection. You can head over to Top Deck TCG, and he'll probably be adding some promos and stuff like that, as he normally does. I don't know if he's going to grab any uh, Kanans or Battle Droids, but that's something to keep an eye out on. And he, he has uh, reasonable prices. so For sure. Any final thoughts, Shane? Uh, I would just like to close out the podcast. So whenever you're ready, I will. Uh, I'll say my final thoughts. Is now the time? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't have anything else to say. All right. Uh, Jack is officially better than Tommy. Uh-